I love symmetry. I'm not sure exactly why, but I've loved it since I was a kid. I knew everything had a place, and in my room, everything was right where it belonged. My parents didn't have it. My grandparents didn't have it either. Not a single person in my family had it. I started referring to it as it because I truly believed it was a thing inside of me. A stowaway that shouldn't be there but lives inside me. It was a need. A longing to be perfect. Perfect on both sides. My life is pretty much in order. I say pretty much because there's one issue that must be dealt with. You see, I have what's called heterochromia iridium, or two different colored irises. My right eye was a cornflower blue, my left a pale green. Both my parents have cornflower blue eyes, my siblings and cousins as well. My green eye is the broken one, and it makes me unbalanced. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, it stares right back at me. It's all I can think about now. Everything is in its right place, except my green little mistake. It didn't hurt at first when I dug the spoon under my eye. It didn't even hurt when it popped out and was hanging by my cheek. Was it shock that was keeping the pain away or was it it? I snipped the octave nerve and blotted the warm fluids that were streaming down my face. My vision being cut in half was a strange sensation. What was left of the dangling flesh, I placed back in the now empty hole. I bandaged the wound, rinsed the spoon, and went to sleep. I woke up happy. I slept better than I had in years. It was finally done. I was fixed. I got out of bed and stumbled to the bathroom. My body ached and my head was on fire. I flipped the switch in the bathroom and the light was blinding. I slowly removed the bandage that was soaked with blood and was sticking to my face like tape. But when I looked up into the mirror, my stomach turned. Only then had I realized what I had done to myself, and I couldn't believe it. There was a hole in the left side of my face, but not the right. It was so much harder digging out the second eye. My hands were shaky, and when I dug the spoon in, I missed several times. Once the eye popped out, I reached for my scissors to finish the job. The blood from the previous night had dried on the blades. So the scissors, they didn't cut very well. You know when you were a kid in elementary school and your teacher made you cut construction paper for art projects? Did you ever try to cut too many pieces at once and the scissors just couldn't take it? The blades would kind of fold over each other and the paper would get pined between them? Well, that's what happened to my eye. The octave nerve was pined between the two blades. It was stuck. And as I tried desperately and frantically to make it unstuck, I slipped on the blood and started falling to the floor. Reflexes kicked in and I let go of my eye to break my fall with my hand. The weight of the stuck scissors on my hanging eye was unbearable. I knew I couldn't stand it long enough to make it to the kitchen to grab a knife. So I pulled. I pulled it straight out of my head. I felt the flesh tear from inside my skull. I felt it rip and spew liquids everywhere. I knew I was crying, but there was no telling the tears from the blood from the ocular fluid. When I heard that wet slap of bloody flesh across the tile floor, I knew I was done. I knew it was done. I could live my life now without having to see people's awful, messy, uneven lives. The relief washed over me, and I knew that this time it would last. I never felt this way before, never had this much hope. And as I laid in my bathroom on that cold, wet, sticky tile, I smiled for the first time in years.